So we now know how to make objects inside Maya. Let's have a look at how we can modify those objects to turn them into different shapes. We're going to start with a cube, a polygon cube inside Maya. We're going to have a look at how the cube is actually created first. So in the channel box, we're just going to have a look at the inputs for the cube and we're going to just press the F key to focus in on that cube. Let's start by just modifying the shape of the cube. So we're going to change the width of the cube by 5 units. And I'm going to change the depth of the cube by 3 units. Okay, so this has given me a very simple looking rectangular slab like shape. I'm going to then change the subdivisions. So I'm going to change the subdivisions on the height, uh, sorry, on the width and also on the depth. So this has now divided my object into four parts. So I now have four sections dividing my polygon cube. Now what are these sections called? Well let's just have a look at what these sections are called. If we right mouse click and hold over the object you can see the components that make up the polygon object. So we have, if I switch to multi selection, we have points, and these are known as vertexes, which we can select. We have edges and we have faces. And if we hold down shift we can multi select. Or if we hold down control on a PC, we can deselect. If I select the face on one side and the face on the other side. I can go down to my transform tool and I can move those faces to start to change the shape of my object. If I use the scale tool I can scale the object out and it gives me a uniform type of shape as you can see. So what if I, I want to add more uh, what if I want to add more divisions to my object? Well, once we've made the object, it becomes difficult to change the object further. And this is because the faces and edges and vertexes take up world space. If we were to change our inputs, what you will see is that the shape of the object starts to change and we don't want the shape that we've made to change. So to actually add more divisions once we've started to modify the, the tr and transform the components we need to go and use some of the modification tools. If we hold down the shift key and the right mouse button we can actually access some of these tools that are dependent on our object. So this is now a flyout menu. This flyout menu is uh, a good way of getting into some of the more uh, complicated tool sets inside Maya. So I'm going to ask Maya to activate the insert edge loop tool and here I can start to add loops to my object. You see those loops have been added. So next add, I want to actually move these edges. So I'm just using the component move tool. And you see now I've started to round off those edges and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a face using the right mouse click and select and I'm going to create a new face from this face. To do that I'm going to use the shift menu again and I'm going to extrude that face. And this gives us a polygon extrude option box where we can change the thickness Okay we can change the translate, we can change the offset so the offset will actually make it larger or smaller and we can actually change the divisions as well and there is a tool to help keep faces together so if I wanted to do this across these three faces but I wanted them all to come out separately if I turn this off and I change the thickness you can see that they come out separately. There we go. If I turn it on, they join together, off. 
we'll just create the division in there and just add a little bit of an offset as well so I've now made from a polygon cube a, a hand like shape which is quite accurate just to change this uh, flow of the polygons and I could start to manipulate the edges just to give them a little bit more of a natural shape I might even add another loop in the center you can see how quickly we got to a, a new shape from the components so what if I wanted to select the vertexes so I can select the vertexes now if I wanted to rotate these vertexes using the rotate function and if I open up the tool settings for this rotate function let's say we do this uh, across the object so it's on the objects position you can see that we we are rotating across uh, the object from the center point so I'd need to use the uh, the move pivot point command, so I might do this from the top be a little easier, which is the D key I can change the pivot point and then if I go back to the perspective view I can actually create a bend it's a little bit more in keeping with where the digit would be and there we go and if we go back to select once we've deselected you can see it's reset the pivot position so looking at the inputs now on the channel box you can see that we've got some of the changes that have been made to the stack so the node has now changed so we've got the the polycube node then we've got the first tweak that we did then the the split ring uh, command which was the insert edge loop we did two of those then another tweak where we've changed it and then an extrude face and then another extrude face so we can jump into some of these and change these so let's say for instance we needed an extra division on the the second set we could go in there and we could change the divisions to four because we've not modified those if they're still as they were we should be okay but if we go back to the extrude face on this one and change this to four we get a problem because they've changed from their creation position and it starts to reorder those vertexes, edges and faces. So you have to be mindful of how you use the input to shape your nodes when you're starting out but you can get some very good results very very quickly just with some basic transform tools, some insert edge loops and some extrudes.